Well, Ed, um, today is your last day of a tour that's taken you through the United Arab Emirates, um, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and here finally to Beirut. You're off home this afternoon. We're delighted that you came. In, in most of those countries, I know that you've met with academics, students, clerics, journalists, members of parliament, government officials and ministers. You came to speak to them about Islam in Australia, about its diversity, about the community's successes and its problems. Um, how, how was it? Um, how did you find their knowledge uh, and understanding of Australia and of Islam in Australia? It's, um, well, first, it's been an amazing trip for me. It's been fantastic to have this opportunity, and I've, I've got to thank you for even thinking of inviting me out here. Uh, and the range of people I've spoken to is unbelievable. Um, I mean, you, you can list them by profession, but it doesn't really capture <laughs> um, the range of people. And as far as their knowledge, there's also a huge amount of diversity. Uh, I, I met people for whom Australia, I think, barely existed as a country in their consciousness, and certainly Muslims in Australia barely existed. It's a failure on my part. <laughs> well, no, uh, well, no, Beirut was not that situation. Um, but, you know, I think it's just a, a function of the, the evolution of some of their societies, you know, I mean, uh, if you look at a country like the UAE, there are people coming from all over the world all the time to make money, and occasionally they'll run into an Australian that they're not really thinking about it very much. Mm -hmm. And Muslims in Australia, is just it's not a concept that they would ever think about. Uh, and I think a lot of that continued, actually for most of the tour. Um, the, the level of knowledge about Muslims in Australia particularly was, was very small. Uh, even in a country like Turkey, where you have a huge Turkish population in Australia, mm. overwhelmingly, most Turks don't have family in Australia because there are so many of them. Mm. So you kind of think that there would be these strong familial connections that pervade through society and it isn't really the case because of the size of the country. Uh, and so Turkey, of course, has very strong relationships with Australia Europe, based on a whole range of things, the Anzac experience and so on. Uh, but it's not necessarily connected to the Muslim communities. So uh, I was, you know, it was great to have that opportunity to talk to them because their experience of Islam as a community and, and, as, um, and also as a religion is highly contextual. Mm -hmm. Our context is radically different. And so anything that we have to sell that I had to say to them, just merely the, th the stuff that I thought was mundane that was kind of a bit boring and let's get to the good stuff, mm. that seemed to be the stuff that immediately interested them because I think it was so far removed from anything they'd thought about before uh, as far as Islam in the world and then in Western nations. Um, I would say Beirut was in many ways an exception to what I've said there because the connection between Lebanese, uh, sort of the Lebanese elite, if I can put it that way here, and Australia seem to be a lot stronger. They seem to have a much better understanding of not so much the Muslim communities, but the Lebanese community, which of course is a very significant part of the Muslim community, and then the Christian communities uh, in, in Australia and, and even the Druze communities. They sort of had that connection more strongly, and so the conversation became a much more sophisticated one immediately, uh, which was a great experience as well. Mm, terrific. I, I, um, I found it fascinating myself. In, you know, I, amazed how much I learned about the Muslim community in Australia and I, and I sat in on, on the seminars that you did in, in Lebanon. Um, there, was, there was great interest, I thought, in what you were saying about the communities in Australia, particularly the, the diversity and uh, I think the people you spoke to have walked away from those meetings with a, a much greater understanding of uh, Islam in Australia. Did, did, you, mm. did you sort of feel that yourself? Yeah, I, I did get that sense. That, but, I mean. I think it varied from city to city in the sense that mm. some were coming off a of low place and, yeah. and others weren't. But yeah, I, you know, I think because in, in the case of Lebanon, you're dealing with a country that already has a diversity within it. Mm. There is no clear majority yeah. within Lebanon. And so they understand the dynamics of community politics. Mm. Um, obviously, it's played out at a much more epic scale yeah. here. But they get the idea, mm. I think. That they get the idea of what contestations within communities and between communities can look like. Uh, it's very different in the Australian context because you have multiculturalism, you have hyper diversity in Australia, and a lot of that diversity is fueled by migration, mm -hmm. not merely by geopolitics and and, uh, and sectarianism. But nonetheless, I felt that there was a logic that they were trying to unlock mm -hmm. as they were talking to me uh, about the way that Australia works. Mm -hmm. And I was really fascinated. I mean, yesterday. Uh, we, that lunch engagement we had yes, with yes. some politicians and clerics, Sunni and Shia, 
And it was really fascinating because I'd never spent that much time at a lunch talking about effectively local government regulation. <laughs> it's um, funny. Yeah, and, and what was intriguing about that was the stuff they were interested in. Yeah. And what they were trying to figure out, it seemed to me, was the relationship that Islam in Australia, or Muslims in Australia, or really anybody in Australia, has with the state. Yeah. What is the basis on which that relationship is constructed? Is it constructed on a sectarian basis? Is it constructed a, a, in a civic basis as a citizen with a, yeah. a state? Uh, a lot of questions about religious affairs that seem to be influenced by the knowledge of France. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just fascinating to see the local context mm -hmm. unfold yeah. in the questions they're asking about Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's a really important lesson for me, is that, which you know, I always knew at an intellectual level, but to see it mm -hmm. uh, uh, emerge, that any question you get asked from anywhere in the world has imported into it a whole lot of assumptions from that local context yeah. and, and our relationship yeah. as Muslims or as Australians or as both mm. uh, must take that into account. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as I said, it, it was a, a great experience for us and, and I'm sure that you've, you've broadened the understanding and the knowledge about Australia and, and Islam in Australia. And we thank you very much for coming. I know that uh, in January we're hoping to get you back to the region, to, uh, to Egypt, Jordan and to, and to the Palestinian territories mm. uh, in Ramallah. So uh, all the best with that and uh, safe journey home. No, thank you very much for having me and it's been a huge thing. Uh, I mean, whatever impact I've had here, the impact on me has been enormous. Yeah. Uh, right. Stuff I've learned. So that's, that's the same. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I'll set up. Yeah. Thank you.